lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. This thing called life. We live, we live, we live, we live. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me.
Well, hello, hello, hello. I am not the one to gossip, but y'all know what time it is. Woo, when I tell you we got a story for you, a powerful testimony tonight. Like I said, I'm not the one to gossip because I can't tell nobody's story like they can. But before I bring my special guest on tonight, I want to give a couple of thanks. Shout out to my little sister, Kimmy Kim. Thank you, mighty woman of God, for always being there. I'm so proud of you. Keep on pressing. The blessing is in the pressing. I want to thank God for the other radio hosts who have made me feel welcome. Since I've been experimenting with this uh, this radio show and, and, and showing me love, sending prayers to y'all, um, this God is just good, y'all. That's all I can say today. He, he's good today, ever more. Um, like I said, we have a powerful, powerful story. Um, before I bring him on, um, if y'all can go and pray with me, because we have to give God what rightfully belongs to him, and that's all the glory. So if you could just join me in this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for another blessed day. Thank you for being the God that you are, a true, merciful, kind, loving, understanding, all-knowing. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you asking you in the name of Jesus to forgive us for our sins and unspoken sins. Asking you to bless our families, our friends, and our enemies. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to search our heart. Anything that's not of you, remove it and, and put the right spirit in. And Lord, we ask that we may decrease so that you can increase. And I pray to God that this 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 powerful testimony be able to bless somebody today. And we ask all you saying that Jesus tuned in to from Under a Bridge Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Blossom. But y'all didn't come to hear me. Y'all came to hear this. I'm telling you, I am not the one to gossip. When I heard his story, his story and my story is so much alike. You know, so uh, with with I'm not going to take up no more time. I always like my guests to say their name and, and tell us what God has, is, and, and doing in their life. Is my guest there tonight? Yes, I am. How you doing? Hey, little bro. What's going on? Hey, like you say, God is good. It's an honor to be on your show. We appreciate the love. Amen. Amen. Is your wife, is your lovely wife there too? Hello, Blossom. How you doing? This is Tanya. Hey, sweetie pie. What's going on? Oh, I am doing wonderful. We just so thankful that you allowed us to come on and share, and we thank God for allowing us to share our story with so many. Amen, amen. Well, like I said, I'm not the one to gossip. I'm going to turn the mic over to God and you, y'all power team, and just let God use y'all, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Like I say, we... We we like to always express and we 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 give all uh, the glory to God. You know uh, He is constantly working in our life and 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 bringing us through. You know, Amen. like you say, we have we have similar stories. Uh, Tanya and I are married. We met at UGA. Uh, today we own Big Mouth Bend Stores near the historical King Center downtown Atlanta. Uh, we also are founders of Motivation Forward, which is a nonprofit that deals with outreach, with homelessness, uh, mental illness, and uh, addiction. Um, you, you know, to, I sit on the board for Partners for Home, and, and my wife is a medical device consultant. We're, we're very busy and working, and, and all glory to God. Uh, but where I came from, oh. Hey, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you, only you knew where I came from. Um, you know, I'll start in the beginning, but but I, I like to just say, you know, if you had told me when I graduated from high school and went off to college that I would somehow lose focus, uh, quit school, attempt to sell drugs, get busted, get on drugs, get crushed on a truck and end up under a bridge, I would have laughed at you, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. because I would have, I would have thought no way, but that happened, you know, and also from under that bridge, if you had told me that I would uh, eventually be delivered from the drugs, I would move forward. I'd be reunited with Tanya, my college sweetheart, 24 years later, uh, be honored by the mayor of Atlanta, publish a book, 
opened a business two blocks from that same bridge, found a nonprofit. I, I would have told you to get out my face then because I wouldn't have believed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it happened, and and that's where we are today, you know. And and always people want to know, um, how did you get there? You know, how in the world did um an intelligent young man, um, on a road student with big dreams end up under a bridge, you know, giving up on life, attempting suicide. Well, you know, how did I get there? You know, and a lot of times, you know, we have to go back into our childhood. I was born in North Carolina. Uh, I had two great seeds in my life. Um, One was a spiritual seed. I grew up in the church, a holiness church, as a matter of fact. My grandmother raised me because my mother uh, was attending Clark Atlanta at the time I was born, and she wanted to continue her education. So my grandmother stepped in and raised me in North Carolina while mom was in Atlanta in college. So one of the main seeds were were the spiritual seed, growing up in the church. Another seed in my life is uh, the entrepreneurship. You know, while in a gas station, this is back in the 70s, you know, I observed a gentleman turn in an empty Coke bottle and get money for it. And at the age of six, my eyes got big, you know, big as a quarter. (laughs) I said, you gave him money for an empty bottle, and, you know, the cashier said, yes, we we give you money for the bottles. I said, I know where a lot of those bottles are, and I ran home, grabbed my red wagon, and loaded up my bottles and took them back to the gas station. I made $2, and I sat in the woods and laughed. (laughs) You know, I was was, was an entrepreneur, entrepreneur from that point. And you know that God gives us all free will. So, you know, of course, with free will, you're going to have good and you're going to have evil because we all have free will. Well, um, another childhood trauma in my life that would affect me uh, mentally and uh, play part of my addiction later on in life was, you know, one day while searching for bottles in the woods of North Carolina, I ended up on somebody's property, a man. And I was trespassing. And, you know, I was raised with good manners by my grandmother. So I told the the gentleman that um, I apologized and I tried to leave his property. But he insisted that I was trespassing and I I had to do what he said do. So he snatched my hand, the handle of the red wagon fell to the ground, and he pulled me farther in the woods. And as a result, I was molested at the age of six. Now, he told me if I revealed any of this to anyone, he would kill them, especially my grandmother. So I love my grandmother. I didn't want him to do anything to me or my family. So I buried that secret. You know, and another uh, pretty much childhood trauma was uh, being raised also in an abusive family where my grandfather, who was suffering from alcoholism, would beat my grandmother. You know, like I say, we were in church four to five times a week. And every time we got home from church, grandmama pretty much got a beating, a beating. Grand, granddad would be drunk and be mad because dinner wasn't ready or he didn't like the type of dinner grandma was cooking or he would make up a reason, some reason he would use to beat on my grandmother. And I also witnessed that. Well, finally, grandmother passed and I came back to live with my mom in Atlanta. I was an ambitious student. You know, mom was a valedictorian, so she made sure we did well in school. You know, I graduated on a roll student and went out to the University of Georgia, 1986. Now, this is where we have, you know, you get your freedom, you're away from home. So I partied, I drank, I got drunk. And I didn't know that when I was drinking and, and, and partying, I was trying to erase what happened to me as a kid in the woods of North Carolina. But, you know, I was uh, a hard worker in school. I I worked five part-time jobs, put myself through school, but I noticed that I always share with schools. I speak often in the school system, and I often share that that's where I pretty much uh, started making bad choices. One was, you know, partying too hard and not focusing on school like I should. And one of the major mistakes, I was I was in the music. I had a song out on the radio. I opened up for De La Soul, and 
at that point, I was like, I'm tired of school. I'm going to blow up as a rapper, so I'm going to quit school. So four quarters short of a degree, I decided that I would leave the University of Georgia. Now, I had met Tanya, and we were dating, and, you know, but when I quit school, we kind of lost touch with each other. She came back to Atlanta, but I think she went on, I, well, she went on to finish at Georgia State. And I kind of went my way. And that's when all the bad choices start, began to happen. I got back to Atlanta. I didn't make it into music. I started drinking a fifth of liquor every day. Pretty much was, in, you know, becoming an alcoholic like my granddad. And um, I would get it together to get a job. And, you know, again, that entrepreneur would kick in, and I would eventually start a business. And this was a mail order business. This is when you order stuff through the mail. There was not an Internet at that time. Uh, not personally, anyway. Not not available for personal use. So I did real well. I, you know, I moved out to the wealthy part of Atlanta. You know, and at this point, I like to to relate this to to the my spiritual walk because, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up in the church. So I was saved from an early age, and I walked in the will of the Lord from an early age. But bit by bit, I started to grow apart from the Lord, and. You know, going through my ordeal, when I received my fame in Athens and and things, I became a little arrogant. When I came back to Atlanta, I went through my depression. But when I started to um, move out and become wealthy, I started to take most of the credit for it myself. And, you know, they came out with the Internet for personal use, and I was going out of business. So I decided that I would... So supplement my income. I was living in a wealthy part of Atlanta, so at that time I was producing somebody that was into music as well, but he was a big-time drug dealer in Decatur. So I made another major mistake, as I share. You know, I decided to sell drugs to remain in the wealthy part of Atlanta. And like I said, at that point, that's when I was pretty much, you know, that prodigal son saying, let me go, let me go off and do what I want to do. And I ventured off. When I started selling drugs, I became even more arrogant. I had VIPs at every club and, you know, just on my way down and didn't even know it. Eventually, a few months later, I would get busted. But I I tell people that wasn't my worst sentence. Uh, My my worst sentence was with all that, the childhood trauma, the spiritual void that I now have because I pretty much walked away from the Lord. I took my first hit of crack. And when I did that, it hit me like a brick. You know, it, you know, it was an instant rush, and I kept smoking and smoking. Uh, eventually, it would become a daily habit, and eventually it would grow to an $18,000 a month habit. And at the time, I was selling and smoking, but I got to the point where I couldn't sell and smoke anymore. And so at this point, you know, last time my mom saw me, Mama had this suit and tie on, a business owner in Buckhead. But when I started indulging in the drugs, mom didn't see me for a year. So a year before she saw me in that suit and tie, and a year later she would see me with a shirt that I would have on for a week, strung out in the street. And I'll never forget the look on mom's face. Mom was so disappointed and hurt. She cried and told me to get in the car. She took me home, and Blossom, that was the beginning of a 17 year drug addiction. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah. So, you know, mom was, I was, you know, I did well. I was, you know, rested at the house and go get a job. But you know how addiction was. I would stay clean long enough until I got a check or got some money. Right. So that, 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 um, that, that was the beginning of a 17 year drug addiction to the point where I couldn't even work a regular job. You know, so I, I got a job at a day labor working on the back of a garbage truck. And I love that job. I did it for a few years, you know. But one day while riding on the back of the garbage truck, the driver decided to bag down a culture site where there were three dump trucks. But he only saw two and decided to bag toward the third dump truck. I, I knew that he was uh, backing up a little too fast and wasn't going to stop. I was yelling for him to stop. And and while I was on the back, he bagged me into that third dump truck and mm. pinned me between the trucks, crushing my pelvis. I heard the bones crack, and all my bowels released, and I passed out. I awakened mm. a few seconds later, 
Yeah. I wake, I wake in a few seconds later, laying on the curb, screaming in excruciating pain. Uh, and I heard the sirens yelling, well, and they were on the way, and people were just staring at me. And so when I got to the hospital, the damage was so severe that it took two sets of nurses to turn me over at the same time. The only thing connected my top and bottom was the spinal cord. So, you know, I, Dr. Mary Jo Albert, uh, performed surgery and connected my my legs by putting a rod in my lower back. And so the physical therapy said, all we can do is show you how to get in a wheelchair. You know, so for the next year, I will be in that wheelchair um, attempting to recover. And through determination, God's grace and mercy and his healing, I got the strength to walk again. Now, remember oh, this kid. That, hey, hey, man, right? Now, hmm. remember this kid that was that pulling that wagon around, you know, that entrepreneur kid. And here I am again. Entrepreneurship would always come out when I would, you know, here and there. So I, when I got around to walking again, I was using my wheelchair as a walker. Then I, I could fully walk again. And I took that same wheelchair that I was uh, confined to, and I put a cooler in it and put chips on top, and I started pushing that wheelchair around town selling snacks. I walked around downtown Atlanta, and I gave myself the name Big Mouth Ben because I said, since I'm walking around downtown, let me use the wheelchair to advertise for people. So people would put their flyers on my wheelchair. And so my slogan was, Big Mouth Ben, if you want to sell it, let me tell it. So, (laughs) yeah, so so shortly after I got around, yeah, you there? Okay. Shortly after I got to walk around Blossom, I I, wouldn't be long before I would relapse again. You know, I got to walk around downtown and I found myself on Fort Street, which was drug infested. And it wouldn't take long before I would be sitting in one of the apartments again, getting high. And so now I would be walking around selling my snacks to support my drug habit. Eventually I would design a bike to get around and, um, and go on to sell my snacks. But uh, finally through addiction, you know, I hit my bottom, you know, I was sleeping in an abandoned apartment and finally they tore down those apartments and I had to migrate to under the bridge. You know, there were, uh, there were a few people there. I, I said, where could I lay my blanket, my cushion? They said, find you two parking spaces and that's your space. And so for the next few years, I would be under that bridge, riding around, selling my snacks, and coming back to that bridge. And this would go on, Blossom, until finally, finally I decided to have a conversation with God. Finally, I was that prodigal son that came to his senses. You know, I said, it's got to be more to life than this. You know, I know that that God had meant for me to have more. I, I had a business. I went to school. I was good at music. I was good in and many things. I had many talents. So I knew that God wanted more, and I and I and I cried out. I said, God, I, it's got to be more to life than this. And it was at that time God answered back. You know, He said, "It is. I promise to love you wherever you want to be. If you want to be under this bridge, I'll love you under the bridge. If you want to go to prison, I will love you in prison. But it's up to you where you want to be loved." And I felt that lift in my spirit, and I began to become curious of the sober life once again. And, you know, it wasn't easy. You know, I was forced to go through a program, but by this time I was ready. I went through the program. I was doing well, and um, I called mom up. I was going to graduate, and mom was so excited. By this time, mom was in North Carolina. I was in Atlanta, and mom would say, I'm excited. I want to see my baby walk across that stage and receive a certificate of graduating from the program. So mom came down Thursday before I was going to speak that following Tuesday, and mom had a heart attack Saturday and passed away Sunday. Um, And But the the only thing, Blossom, is that she did get to see her son sober. So she really believed that I was going to get it together, and she saw that I had it together before she left here. Amen. That's a blessing. Thank you. And my regrets at that time, of course, was why didn't I get it together sooner? I felt like I could have had more time with my mom if I had just overcome addiction sooner. You know, but I had to process that that as well. 
So I, I kept moving forward. I spoke at a graduation. A year later, I discovered my calling, my purpose in life, and that's to brighten people's life, to show people proof of what God has done in my life, as, as such as, as he's done in yours. You know, um, we, you know, that's what we do. We have to share that story because we are physical proof that God delivers, God blesses, and restores. And so I made my bike yellow to represent the sunshine, and I started riding around selling snacks. And a couple years later, I was reunited with Tanya. And I'm going to let Tanya talk about that part there. I We, we found each other on yeah, social media. Men, men, can, men can tell it romantic like women can. You know what I'm saying? No, so no. Yeah, no okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, as, as Ben said, it was 24 yeah. years later of us coming back together, um, not even, you know, seeing each other, even though we were both in Atlanta, um, not even a phone call. We just had totally lost contact with each other. And I saw him on social media. He saw me, and I, and I was looking at his picture on social media, and I had always wondered over the years how he was doing, what he was up to. I, I even told him on that first date, I, you know, I, I was expecting to see him as, you know, a head of a radio station, um, I, I saw him doing big things because of the type of person that he were and he was in college. Um, he was always such a hard worker. He was always promoting and writing. Um, and I just knew success um, was there for him. And I had no idea that he had um, succumbed to uh, the addiction and homelessness. And we went out on our first date. And Blossom, I will tell you that I think one of the things that I – um, love about him most and respect is his honesty, even on that first date after 24 years. He told me about um, his addiction to uh, the, the crack cocaine. He told me about being homeless for uh, the years under the bridge and, and just kind of filled me into what had led to his um, making those choices and, and what it led to. And I respected that so much. Um, it was just something that I just didn't see too often, that type of honesty, especially after seeing someone um, after it's been years. And I always tell him I love him for the type of man that he is, that he's able to um, be transparent. And that tra- yeah. transparency is definitely, I think, what is touching so many people as we are able to share this story, um, being able to lay it out and say, I, you know, I made this mistake and – it's okay, you know, it happened, but now what? And Amen. so he, he he put it all out there for me, and, and we, since that point, we've just taken that and tried to be a blessing and teach and teach as much as we can um, to keep people from making those mistakes. Or if they do, um, it's okay that you could come out of it. So that, that first day was definitely, it was one I never had before, but it was one I'd never forget. So it, it, it was you anyone who meets him will will see that transparency that is there, and it allowed me and him to actually start off a lot better than I, a lot of relationships that people start off in because you don't start off with that honesty. So, yeah. and you know, it, 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 when I'm when I met y'all, it, it's it's with both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's too too much, and when you do, you supposed to appreciate it. You know that's why I love that's, that's right. what I love about y'all too. Y'all tag team, thank um, you. Thank you. together, so, and, and and it's a blessing to see that. It gives it gives me it hope is. that God has somebody with that's gonna He's gonna give me that we can tag that's right. life together like y'all doing. So I I, I commend y'all. Thank you so much, and we and we do give all the glory to God because we know that with both of our past that we I I, I write about it sometimes is that we're that unlikely couple. Um, because I I didn't come from a background of knowing about addiction. I've known people that use drugs, but I had never known anyone to um, actually have an addiction to the point that you couldn't even, you know, work a regular job that you were living under a bridge. So when he told me that, I at Boston, I have to admit it did scare me. I respected mm-hmm. the honesty, but it did scare me because it was something that I wasn't used to. And I, I tell him that at that time I was working out of town, but I could feel 
the presence of God pulling me back to him. Cause you know, your, your, your mind and your flesh should be telling you, Oh no, 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 don't bother with this. And, but I kept feeling that presence that, that pull from God to, to keep my conversation going with him. And so we just kept talking and getting to know each other. And we both had big plans of what we want to do with our lives. And it just all came together. It it, it came Amen. together. Yes. Yes. Amen. So now, so now, if if um, our listeners, um, if okay, coming to fix in, what nugget could you give somebody right now? Right now, what I, if someone is going through a struggle right now, I I would tell them to talk to God about that struggle. A lot of times, we we we, we you know, it's okay to have need, need a shoulder to lean on or ear or ear to cry to. But God wants that cry. He wants that cry. He wants that that cry out. And I, it's it's. I, I like to tell people that a conversation with God would will change your life. And a lot of times when I say conversation, conversation entails a two way thing. A lot of times in prayer, we it's a one way because we're praying, you know. But a conversation is someone talking back to you. And when you have that conversation with God and you know he's talking back to you, you feel it. Because when God talks to you, your spirit feels it. And Amen. and so if you're going through something, you've got to know. You know, you know you're know, you a great example. I'm a great example. There are many other examples of, of the mighty acts of God in their life. And no one is immune to that same miracle. Everyone is a potential miracle because God loves us. He loves us so much. And all we have have to do is to surrender, surrender to the Lord, talk to him. And and then after that, become determined to move forward, to know that you're going to come out of it. You know, a lot of the things we read off and all the little titles and accomplishments, that's all good, but all that's icing. You know, I like to tell people that it's all icing, that God will put the icing on our cake but we still have to bake the cake, meaning you that, you know, God, God, yeah, see, God, the word says God will give us the desires of our heart. So if you truly desire something, if you truly desire to come from up under the bridge or, 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 or you know, live right, you know, that's going to, you, you're going to have to show it with some sacrifice and some determination. And God is there and God, you know, God, there's nothing that God can't do. So, you know, just know that and just know that in a blink of an eye, God, it doesn't take God no two weeks, three hours, four months. I mean, God can do it. He put the world together with his words. He didn't use any materials. You know, there were no building materials or anything. He just simply spoke it, and it happened. So, mm-hmm. you know, your conversation with God is is is, a, is getting him to speak into your life and, and, and know that. And we had no idea of the things that would unfold for us. We just stay committed to living right, doing right, giving back, taking care of our people, and giving God the glory, and doors continue to open, and we continue to be blessed. And so, yeah. Hey, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Finish up. I apologize. Uh, no, no, no. You're good. I'm good. Okay, okay. What nugget could you give? Uh, I would definitely say uh, Ben says something here about God's words, how God um, just spoke. And so in saying that, we have to understand how powerful our words are and in speaking those words, being truthful. So I, I always say that honesty is key, especially if in, in any relationship, but especially if you're dealing with someone that's going through any type of addiction, being honest with each other, um, being supportive of each other, and not passing judgment too quickly is something that I, I will stand on um, always because you don't know how you can help someone and you don't know how you can be helped if you're not open and honest about what's going on with you. So anyone that's going through any type of addiction, any type of hardship, we have to understand that our words are powerful and the words have to come out truthfully and openly. And you can see how God would make a difference in, in those words that you speak. Amen. Amen. That's why I love about y'all power team. I'm telling you, 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 
you, uh, <laughs> Thank he's you. The, he's the cool. He's the Kool Aid, and you the sugar. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that's yeah, what we're yeah. talking about. <laughs> the peanut yeah, butter and the jelly. You, <laughs> you know how you go to some. <laughs> you know how you go to some people house. They got the they got the Kool Aid, but they ain't got the sugar. Well, in y'all have no got the Kool Aid <laughs> and the sugar. Okay, <laughs> listen, Ben. How could you didn't tell them your name? You didn't tell them about your book. You tell oh, how did they get in touch with you? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, look. The, the, the <laughs> word is Big Mouth Ben. Big Mouth Ben is the word on the internet. If you go to Google, you type in Big Mouth Ben, everything you need will come up. Uh, the website is BigMouthBen.com. You know, B I G M O. You know, mouth, Big Mouth Ben, and it's all one word. And the name of the book, the book that's out is the Book of Benjamin. Uh, now available online. It's available in an ebook, a Kindle. Um, so online, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or if you're in Atlanta, you can come into the store, and I will sign a copy for you. Or if you order yours and deliver it, and you want to come by, I'll be glad to sign it. Yeah, and our address to the to the store is 370 Auburn Avenue. We're near the King Center. You'll see a bright yellow bike parked outside. That's the logo of the store. Yeah. Tell you, you want to give them your uh, contact information? Uh, yes, you can contact me on Facebook as um, Tanya Graham. I am also on Instagram as Tanya Z underscore G. Again, as Tanya, T-A-N-Y-A, Z as in zebra underscore G. And um, anytime you probably see something with uh, Big Mouth Ben on there, I'm in there somewhere, so you could click on me and connect with me as well. And we would love to hear from any. Yes. And thank Amen. you so much. Girl, thank God. I, I just thank God that y'all, with y'all busy schedule. Well, when we met at the, from the bottom to the top, it was just truly a blessing to meet a couple. You know what I'm saying? Um it's just a blessing to see a husband and wife working together. And as another woman, you know, sometimes us women think that it's um it's gonna take away from us if we give another woman a compliment. But I was watching you that day and you were so supportive of your husband. You I oh, mean, you was able to answer the questions if somebody needed to know something if he walked away. And that's what I'm talking about. Y'all are the yeah. Kool Aid and the sugar. So <laughs> y'all can be, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> and I'm being, I'm being honest because you know what, you don't we see love that, that. Much. Yeah, and I'm you know what, and I you, you, we want that. We want that. Yeah. It's, it's and it's, and it's, yeah. You know, see, I'm it's, sorry to interrupt, but you know why we know we're in the spirit? Why is that? Because that's a, because that's her nickname, Black Cherry. <laughs> hey, nah. Hey, nah. Hey, listen. Listen, y'all need to get some T-shirts say Kool-Aid and Sugar. I'm telling you, I'm just giving you your props. Because hey, hey. You, 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 you have to give well, people their flowers while they're alive because tomorrow's not promised to you know what I'm saying and I'm just saying yeah. I'm not worshiping y'all like that but I'm just I want the listeners to know that I've seen this for myself how God has blessed you with the woman to support you you know and it, it's truly a blessing you can tell God has given you your helpmate you know so it, don't, you better not mess up cause boy I'll I come up there and do something to you myself you know what I'm saying <laughs> Because even during my struggle, um, you know, they getting high. I didn't trick off. I uh, didn't trick off because I wanted the drug just as bad as the female would have wanted. And I just didn't do it. I didn't want to put nobody through it. So I didn't get in a relationship. Right. And I didn't trick off in the streets. And that's so important because now we're in the same neighborhood. And it was funny because some ladies that are in recovery that God has blessed came in, they were talking about the streets. They talked talk to Tane and said, come and tell the truth. Your husband didn't trick off when he was out there. <laughs> so okay. you can see that even even in the midst of what we were going through, God knew, you know, he knew and, and, and you know, even in our walk, he knew what, what he was putting together. You know, Amen. God Amen. Perfect like track I said, record. It's, it's, a, it's truly, 
truly a blessing. And I, I thank God that I have the privilege of calling y'all friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you we, sometimes we we be putting that label on people, and, and that's not what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be an associate. Right. But I thank God right. that I can call y'all a friend. And, and I thank y'all for taking the time out and coming and being so transparent as husband and wife. Now, okay, so as the husband, what does Tanya bring to the table? One word, oh, what does she bring? She brings everything. I mean, that's my missing rib. She brings my calmness, um, my logicalness. I mean, she just balanced me off. I mean, you know, it, you know, when I'm, you know, she can tell. She just kind of can feel when I'm, you know, when I'm not in the right spirit or when I'm, when it seems like, you know, a challenge or something is coming. She warns me. She brings so much to the table. I, I don't know if I can pinpoint a major thing that she brings to the table because she, it's just, she's just my other half. She's just my, my better half. Amen. You know, so it's just Tell like, me. yeah. Uh-huh. Tell you what, what does Big Ben bring to the table? Boy, you if you know his personality, <laughs> we we are we are so opposites in so way some ways when it comes to our interaction, and he has brought to me and helped me develop myself to be more. Uh, what's the right word for it? He brings me out my box. Um, I'm a very reserved person, and there's things that God wants us to do that you have to step out of that box. You have to step out of that comfort zone. And he's teaching me how to step out that comfort zone and not be afraid to take chances, not to be afraid to be transparent about things. And with me being such a quiet person all these years, that was something I was like, oh, no, we don't talk about this stuff. But seeing (laughs) his walk has taught me and it has made me a better person because I'm able to do that. And I trust that he'll support me in everything that I do. So he's definitely uh, my better half as well. Amen. Well, like I said, I have to give y'all y'all props. Y'all are my Kool-Aid and sugar. And I thank God for (laughs) y'all. And we thank Thank you you so much. (laughs) This can y'all give me y'all contact information one more time. Okay. Any, uh, anybody trying to reach Big, uh, you want to find out more information? You can simply Google Big Mouth Ben. And you know we talk, we do all this talking, and I didn't tell you blossom about my music. I'm a motivational entertainer, so I do positive spiritual hip hop, and, and I'm fine. <laughs> yes, so, I, I know. So I heard it. it. I heard like, it. Like, I know it's like the like the my, my, the youngsters say he going in, aren't going in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, hey, you, you know, Big Mouth Ben is the, yeah. So Big Mouth Ben is the the contact information. Big Mouth Ben dot com will give you access to the social media uh, information, access to the book, the buy link for the book, uh, press coverage. It will it will give you most of the information. I would. I would like for you to visit BigMouthBand.com, www.BigMouthBand.com, and you can go from there and find us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, again, on Facebook, you can uh, just Google Tanya Graham. On Instagram, it's Tanya Z underscore G. And one thing I forgot to mention is I do some blog writing as well, and you could go to TanyaG.blog, and you could see some of those writings. But we would definitely love to hear from people. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank y'all for coming on and, and sharing some time with us and being so transparent. I love you both. Don't let nothing <laughs> change you. Continue to keep doing what God tells you to do. Well, like I told y'all people, I told y'all we had a powerful testimony. I am not the one to gossip, but y'all know this has been from <laughs> Under Bridge Radio Talk Show. But before we close, I like to always open up the doors of the church if anyone wants to give their life to Christ. You know what? It's, it, there's nothing wrong with being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I tell everybody it's it's a high that you can that the drugs or the alcohol or man or a woman cannot give you. So if you would repeat after me the simple prayer, people make living for Christ so hard. But if 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 you walk it with Him, it'll be okay. So if you repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father, pen of my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. And when he comes back, I want to go back with him. 
Y'all, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. God loves us because he gave us his only son who died on the cross. You know, you have a lot of people that said, I could do what Jesus did. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell y'all, the first time they hit me, I'd have told on y'all. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to be real. <laughs> we have to be real because everybody has their own assignment. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. being through your assignment, hanging through your assignment, because Jesus already done his assignment when he gave his life for us. Right. Well, as I said, I love y'all both. Keep on being Kool-Aid and sugar. <laughs> and this has been a great, great show. Y'all get them shirts, and I'm telling y'all, they're going to sell. Get a shirt made uh, and I, put up in the store. And Blossom, you're you're sell. Some now. Yeah, you yeah. got to some nicknames now. I, I, yeah, Kool-Aid and sugar. That's what I'm telling yeah. you. So, like, <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. Next time I'm in Atlanta, I got to come by and see this store. But y'all keep on in encouraging people because God has so much in store for y'all. But I want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight on From Under Bridge Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Blossom, and God's will. I'll talk to y'all next week.